This is ITR reacts to TJ Melky, reacts to CEO, reacts to the primogen, reacts to professor, reacts to the primogen again, uh, reacting to some object oriented code guy. I don't, I, I've only watched like the primogen out of all of these, so can't really comment much on the other people, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, I uh, can shed some light on this. Also, I watch videos at 2.4x speed, so um, uh, hopefully this video won't turn out one hour long. Without further ado, this is Theo Reacts, Prime Reacts, Professor Reacts, Prime Reacts, FP. Yeah. But we're doing, we're like, and like, me. We're, yeah, I'm here too. With me today, my brother, the milkman, Melky Dev. Yeah. Melky, you want to say hi? What's up, I'm Melky? I tried recording the intro like three like, times. In muscles. So, so I've heard this really good. Getting hard a few times. But you can find my muscles now just at Melky, which is ridiculous. Yeah, I'll be talking to the dev when I that. Sorry for not giving the first two minutes. The thing is that people don't get the dev list for two things, because that's how we like share names. But whatever. That's a genuine reaction. All right, well, so to set the stage for those of you who aren't aware of the recent internet sensation that has been Theo reacts to Prime Reacts, Professor reacting to Prime Reacting to Functional Programming. We are going to do our own take on the situation. Teach and Melky react to Theo reacting to Prime Reacting, Professor reacting to Prime Reacting to FP. Yeah, so it's ITR reacting to Theo and Michael reacting to Theo. Teach a method of reacting to Theo, reacting to the private gen, reacting to the professor, reacting to prime, reacting to I forgot again. Whew. Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's what we're doing on our Friday right now. Right, that's, this is, we both have full-time jobs and families, but we are doing this. Okay, yeah. so. and if, and they said I have a full-time job, but well, I don't have this. a family, explain so this. I can do this whatever <laughs> I want. Explain this then. So, let's just kick it off the original, like, two-minute reaction that, you know, was originally shared in 25 minutes, so we'll just see where we get to here. So let's kick it off with our main man, Theo, here. So I heard the deputy has been doing some reactions lately. Yes. Yes. I feel like it's my job to come in and add some reacts to the equation. So without further ado, this is Theo reacts to prime reacts, professor reacts to prime reacts, FP. Yeah. But we're doing we're like but, us, like we're yeah, now there's us, us, us too. Now and us. now there's me too. So uh, yeah, sorry for not being popular uh, like uh, all the other people reacting here. But um, actually, no, I'm not sorry. A professor that reacted to me reacting to Dave Farley about functional programming is not better than OOP. <laughs> but we're probably five minutes into the video and ninety-five words been react. <laughs> I'm a little nervous as one. I hate hearing myself talk. I think all people don't really like hearing themselves talk back. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Speak for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But the funny thing, Prime hears himself. He has playback in his ears. He does play himself all the time. Like he's just lying. He loves it. Also, like, look at, look at how many faces are on the screen right now? Yeah. Look like, at right here. Right here. Yeah, here I, need to, I need to move. We'll move Melky slightly. Uh, we, we gotta move Melky slightly so you can see Prime. We'll leave a little bit of space for Prime in between. In between me and you here. Prime's right between us. I'm just waiting. <laughs> here we go. So, so here's Prime. Here's Prime. One. Here's Prime again. Here's the. Oh, here's me. Here's Melky. Let's let's go. Yeah. Okay. So this is basically how far I watched. So I'm here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight, yeah, eight faces, eight faces. I'm the seven chain. Uh, well, I forgot what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, playback. So a, a playback when reacting, it's interesting because I sometimes use it, sometimes not. If there's too much of a delay, though, it's completely impossible to actually speak. Uh, but yeah, right now I don't have playback on. Right now I'm only listening to the video. Yeah, so they have pretty clear rules about what you can do and not, so I don't know why uh, it's, the editor would make sure <laughs> would keep that in. I think even if it's bleeped, YouTube system sometimes keeps it, uh, notices it, but uh, whatever. Uh, I guess, uh, I mean, I guess I was rambling enough uh, earlier for it to not be demonetized. I think I'm safe at least. We we'll just have to. I don't know. We just part out. Editor, you'll figure it out. Dude, I, what is he? How does he say these things? Like, how does he say these things? All right, just we need to move on. We cannot camp out on this. I want. I, I want my twelve cents of ad revenue for this. Sanders, no. Sanders, both me saying it before the first thirty. Wow, well, imagine getting an ad revenue. Editor, no. Just censor everybody. Just, just, we're okay. It's fine. Say those things this early, Brian. That's the one rule. Like they even say this now explicitly. Nothing even vaguely sexual or curse worthy or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so basically the rules. Why are we? What does this even have to do with the original video at this point? Don't even want their head spin. They don't want those ones. They're not for you. You don't take money. You're a sellout. But you could probably watch my other videos. Okay, let's keep going. I love the dog. By the way, dog is so nice. I prefer cats, but uh, dogs are cool. To a reaction. To a reaction. Remember? When I moved away first? Yep. Yeah, before I moved back? Yeah, I lived in Madison for a while. I'm sorry to be so far away from your brother, but yeah. We haven't seen each other in years. I know, it's been a while. You moved out far away from me, so what can you do? Just hell right away. Yeah, I actually also have a connection to Wisconsin, Madison. But I live in Norway, so it doesn't really matter. Also, objects, wow. Uh, I, I don't like object-oriented programming, not gonna lie. Uh, I'm more of a, what's it called? Procedural programming person, but uh, procedural is kind of, uh, who knows how to define it. But yeah, I, I really like pure functions, though. I, tr I try to write uh, functions as pure as possible, and at least without any invisible side effects. Uh, I... Uh, one thing that's nice about the Unity, and uh, though Unity sucks as a company, I still use Unity, sorry. Uh, one time, thing that's nice about Unity is that they have bursts, which 
forces you to specify if uh, something is an input or mutable or whatever. And I I, I really love when <laughs> people are forced to do that because I feel like that, that makes code a little lot cleaner, especially more than object-oriented programming does because object-oriented programming can't... Uh, actually, I talked about this yesterday with someone, I think. Uh, it tends to be very coupled kind of you end up with a lot of coupling even though you're not supposed to but there's not really a good way of doing it with object-oriented programming i feel there's so much unnecessary codes like abstraction layers for example i can get the point of abstraction layers but i i really don't like having an interface between what i'm calling and what i'm doing if i'm never ever going to change change that you know uh, what a good example like um, well whatever this is this isn't important I'm, I'm sure we'll get to hear about stuff like this soon this man is an average Dr. Disrespect joy right there just hit, hit them with a snooze fest <laughs> snooze fest exclusively with a laptop and Tom's like you like Dr. Disrespect <laughs> <laughs> he, he must have he said a word that Dr. Disrespect says <laughs> yeah like <laughs> snooze fest is a word you know for a fact this guy is out there to be like interesting no he's not no not at all I'm just a regular guy I have actually never watched Dr. Disrespect a professor make the content relatable like obviously he watches the doc I see it smell it on him yeah oh my goodness because we're trying to squeeze it in a little bit let's only talk about the stuff that matters and let's try to get I feel like Snooze Fest is a normal word to say am I being tricked into talking about OOP again I'm gonna be really upset I mean I know it's an FP thing but I haven't seen anything functional yet this is all I'm not happy for 20 seconds Central concepts in all languages objects as activation records dynamically typed oriented uh class-based languages and prototype-based languages. Honestly, I, I kind of have an appreciation for prototype-based languages uh, like um, Lua. I think Lua is prototype-based, right? Where you can just copy an object and then you can copy it again. I was recently modding Cobalt Core and there they kind of use prototypes for ships uh, and not for a lot of other stuff. But for ships, it's actually pretty cool. You can literally just send in the ship class with this stuff filled in and it'll work as a mod as opposed to stuff like um, cards where you have to define a type for the card to actually work uh, in the mod. Uh, and what's kind of annoying, or what's kind of nice, I guess, about prototypes then is that it's so much easier to make uh, make them dynamically. So if I want to like write some codes that generates cards based on something else, right? I can do that easily if it's uh, if if it were a prototype, but since they're classes, I would have to do some uh, kind of uh, stuff that's not very cool. Uh, yeah, I, I kind of like prototypes, even though they do get really messy, they do make it diff more difficult to find, I feel like. Uh, but that might also be because I'm mostly used to them from languages that don't have static typing. Uh, but yeah, I really like prototypes just for getting stuff done, I guess. Uh, for prototyping. <laughs> uh, anyways, yeah, let's uh, let's keep watching. <laughs> I don't want to start this again on Twitter. <laughs> I am really deeply feeling uncomfortable right now. I really don't want to know what stupid opinion I have. And I can't believe... Can I can't believe... <laughs> <laughs> imagine, dude, imagine walking into class and your professor's like, well, today, I know you're expecting a lecture, but we're actually going to watch a reaction video. <laughs> maybe he's right. Maybe Tom is right. Maybe he is a doctor. This is Dr. Disrespect viewer. True. Like, prime. Like, maybe he's actually right on this. <laughs> oh, nice. Theo's in the chat. Hey, Theo. We're reacting to you. reacting to prime reacting to professor reacting to prime reacting to FP. So hopefully you enjoy. <laughs> so, like, That's right? cool. So Thai Theo was actually watching them react to this. So, uh, I mean, technically, if Theo writes something in chat and they bring it up, then this would be a reaction to see your reaction to... Oh, whatever. Whatever. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, Primogen, who's... Saturday, right? Saturday. Wait, did they watch? Look Primogen. Look I just want to make sure you can see. He's, He's so happy. Laughing. Even professors watch me, guys. Even professors. <laughs> genuinely, look, that's genuinely excitement. It's like a kid opening like, a Christmas gift excitement. It's not like, oh my god. It's like, oh, you can't contain it anymore. <laughs> I got the PS5! Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it's nice. I, I think it's nice that he's happy. You gotta gotta be happy over. I mean, they didn't say it's not nice, so I, I shouldn't assume that they're mocking him. Uh, yeah, I, actually, I think they're just pointing out that he's happy, and I think that's good. Yeah, he is happy. Class, am I understanding this correctly? Is trying to <laughs> the realization on Theo's face. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, what did Theo say? Is trying to trying to video in class? Am I understanding this correctly? Is trying to the realization yes, on Theo's yeah. face. So. This is a professor who showed part of Prime's video in class. 
Yes. <laughs> Which university can enroll right now? Yeah. Okay, go back to college. I'm seeing, I'm seeing Prime's <laughs> video about this, by the way, so <laughs> it's not a completely pure blank hand, reaction. On the other hand, the kids I just don't know <laughs> Theo, I don't know these two. <laughs> My only question is like because he put random B-tier blog, is he also saying prime kind of like random uh random B tier YouTuber? <laughs> wait, wait, what was the random B tier blog re of reference to? Going on in this slide, that I'm literally lost. Like random YouTuber, how many YouTubers get like central content in all languages? All of this just makes me think React content goes a long way nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a lot on one slide. It's a lot. It's a lot to process. There is so much to, dude. I I'm kind of confused still. Like. Never mind, never mind, never mind. Somebody I just found, like, one of my friends. Wait, Teach, what makes me funnier with your last comment? If you pause this right now, this slide has a lot going on, but this slide right here has even more. Your face, my face, your face. Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. Like, I can't, can barely process everything that's on my screen right now. Oh, I also love that the guy's like, I didn't really know my friend introduced me to Prime. Like, he gets to completely, like, be absolved. Like, oh, I don't know who this guy really is. I guess Prime is famous enough to... He's got 99 plus. All the Prime, like, OG, you know, Every morning, yeah, he chants Jeru in the mirror, like, he's got 99 plus messages in the user. History. Like, I don't know, I'm just my friend like, yeah, yeah, these people are yeah, yeah, this is whatever. why I'm not <laughs> a good reactor. Because, uh, I'm not... I'm just, like, I mean, so, uh, if if any of y'all have seen my previous videos, uh, I usually edit, cut them a bunch, and then actually try to give meaningful input, kind of. Uh, but that's a lot of effort for reacting, compared to, you know, uh, doing kind of more on-the-fly reacting. Uh, and, but the thing is, if you do on the fly reaction, blah, on the fly reacting, you need to be better at speaking than I am, and I'm not good at speaking. That's uh, no, see, see, that's what I mean. What am I even saying right now? Uh, but yeah, no, I mean everyone here are funny. I'm not funny. Sorry. You know what OO is? You don't even know what the concepts are. Got okay, I think I know he's gonna quote me on. I think I know what's about to happen here. I have no idea what's about to happen. I haven't seen any of the original content. This is the first time I've seen any of this. Honestly, I have no idea what's happening here. The person consuming the chain of consumption, the chain of consumption. <laughs> Honestly, it's been way, way long ago since I watched the original video, so I, I don't even remember what he was quoting. I just remember it was a small part of the video. I do love that premise of Sweat because he doesn't always think while he's streaming, and then a lot of people watch what he says afterwards, and so now he's thinking, oh no, like how is he he's impressed by someone knowledgeable about the subject, right? It's not just like a yes man in chat. It's like let me actually process what you're saying here for a second. Yeah, let's actually think about what you said, right? For the first time. Hold up. Yeah, I guess, I mean, I guess it's easier to have opinions when there's no one to call you out. I don't know. I mean, I, I guess there's always this chat to call him out, but uh, uh, I, from what I've seen from chats in general, not not his chat specifically, but just chats in general, is that uh, there's usually not that many brain cells, you know? There's like one or two re really nice people, and then uh, uh, most... Or, I shouldn't say they don't have brain cells, they just enjoy it in a way that doesn't uh, express their intelligence well, if I should say so. But again, uh, that's not really the point of a chat either, so not really a criticism of chatters either. Hold up for a second. It's a kind of bad blog, uh, but it shows an interesting point. Uh, we're going to skip prototype based stuff entirely, talk a little bit about this language called small talk. Small talk. Small talk. Hey, you know, he's, he's saying that was what the, what the thing was before this guy Zoomerified the course today. Gotcha. Like, they used to be able to cover more content, but now with the Zoomers, they have to stop, like, out here. You know? Oh, I see, I see. Yeah, yeah. Small talk. I think small talk is, like, one of the only properly object oriented languages. Uh, also, by the way, if I look to the left, that's because my, uh, that's where uh, OBS is, and I'm looking at OBS for some reason. And I really should stop uh, looking at OBS. <laughs> What, is, what, what am I even doing with this lighting here? It looks so weird. Wait, let me... Okay, so... Where was it? Yeah, you see behind eight layers? <laughs> yeah. Is that every time I hear someone talk about small talk, it's almost universally pretty positive. You know, which is yeah, it's, a, it's an older programming language and inspired, like, it, it was inspiration for a lot yeah. of different object oriented languages, particularly like Python. Uh, but the reason people talk about it nice is because nobody has to use it anymore. So, like, it's the same. <laughs> yeah. It's the same, you know, it's like, yeah. people complain about languages that they use. Yep. Uh, I, I can agree with that. Right. After this video, channel, the small community is like, up and on. They're like, we're back. The comeback season starts, boys. And there are people still writing it and it has lots of, like, interesting ideas. I'm just saying, like, that's why people don't complain about it, right? Like, Prime Point is no one says anything about it. We all the people who complain about it left. <laughs> it just makes it different now. Just come out, come out. I guess my next, next uh, programming challenge should be writing a game in Smalltalk. Do they even have uh, game engines for Smalltalk? I mean, I could write a console based game. Because it seems like Smalltalk would be awful. But I've heard so many positive things about it, which is, I'm just having a hard time. Uh, <laughs> okay, true. Okay, sure. So, I've talked about this a little bit. I need a term for this, like, like a theoism for this particular phenomena, where, like, the reason React the framework... Oh, is he going to say the same thing, thing I just said? The reason the React framework has so much less satisfaction for average user than a lot of these newer frameworks isn't just because Svelte is ten times better than React, so... He's going to say what I'm saying, yeah. It's because the person working with React didn't pick it. It's just what was being used. Ah, right? that's, Whereas yeah. using Svelte, they picked it. They already oh, that's why they're using it. When you were talking about smaller things that are part of like a niche community, the people who uh, use it are biased towards that's why they're in that community. Yeah, so this is the same reason that then... Yeah, so I don't really have much to say about 
web framework since uh, I'm a game developer. Uh, I just know that uh, all my experience with web development has been awful, honestly. I, uh... <laughs> oh god. Like, I don't like Java for being bloated. Sometimes it feels like web development is even more bloated than Java. And that, that means a lot coming for me because I absolutely hate working in Java. Uh, that said, I do generally enjoy JavaScript more in Java. So maybe not, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. The JavaScript isn't, object, isn't uh, statically typed, I mean. Uh, I'm so happy I don't do web development. Neil, I'm always wins most love editor. This is like, 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 yeah, of course. Like, percentage wise. Yeah. Like, yeah, why would you be using it if you don't love it? That's like stupid. I tell people yeah, all the time. Yeah, you, you make a choice to choose new and set it up and do what you want with it. Right. I, I tell people, like, if that's not fun, you should just not do it. That's totally fine. It doesn't make you a good or bad dev. It's just you have a different, you know, like, reason for using it, right? So, I, yeah, I'm not, at least so far, you know, feels intense. So, I agree 100%. Yeah, 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 no, I, I, I personally don't use Neo Vim or Vim. I, I just use a regular ID, you know, one of the bloated ones. Uh, I, I used to use. Visual Studio bunch, I guess, and then uh, sometimes Visual Studio Code, and now I've switched over to Rider. Obviously, I'm a Unity developer, which is kind of why I'm using these ideas, but doesn't change that they're bloated. Sometimes I wish I could just... Well, actually, no. I, so I, I often use Notepad++ for just programming simple stuff in Python. I don't know, I just need some of the features of IDE sometimes. Like, what was it recently? I wanted the dependency graph of uh, the codes, the classes in code, and somehow everything online was like, ooh, locked behind, super expensive uh, paywall, or ooh, it shows only the assemblies or something. I don't know. I, I just wanted the dependency graph of what uses what so I could see, oh, yeah, this part is probably a bit overcomplicated, so I should probably refactor this before we keep working on it. Uh, and it turns out Ryder kind of had what I wanted, so, uh, yeah, Ryder worked for me. Well, also, like, of course developers don't want to use small talk, we hate talking to other people. Smart, smart, it's funny, funny. Uh, I kind of lost track of what we were talking about here. Speaks out loud. You've probably never heard of, but it's extremely influential. So, with that said, welcome to Professor Reacts to oh, Project baby. Reacts to no, Functional Programming. Teach, other than teach. I'm going to put some money down. Next year, there's going to be a tech creator. Oh, a streamer sure. making YouTube. He's going to find it. credentials. Dang it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, oh my god. Oh my god. This is it. Honey, in your camera. <laughs> Melky, maybe you encouraging him about that is the reason that he starts that. He'll be able to say, he'll be able to tell his future students slash, you know, of course people. The reason I'm here is all thanks to at Melky on Twitch. Because it's reaction. Because it's the reaction. Because it's the reaction. That's how we knew. He's creating mega viral content right now. This is purpose. Okay, wait, wait, wait. So are they saying that this guy on the left, the professor, is going to become a tech tuber? I I kind of lost... Uh, wait, what did you say? Okay, yeah, 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 that's what they're saying. They're saying that he's going to become a tech tuber now because he's really good at making uh, interesting slides or whatever. And they're also saying that he will see this video, or no, not this video, but their video. Uh, and... Uh, Thank personally. Thank okay, 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 I got it. I got it. He'll be able to tell his know. future students why. Slash, why would he want to be a tech people. tuber? The reason I'm here is all thanks to at Mel. Like I feel like he's doing Twitch. well because here. Of this reaction. Because no, of because of the reaction. Of the this reaction. One. The reaction. The reaction. <laughs> That's how we knew. He's creating mega viral content right now. Yeah. This is purpose. <laughs> wait, actually, wait. Considering that he actually uploaded this, doesn't that mean he is sort of a tech tuber? What's a tech tuber? I don't know. I don't know. They seem cool. It's missing too. It's Theo reacts to Primogen reacts to Professor reacts to Primogen reacts to Functional Programming Compiler than OP. Happy like, happy like, happy like. Professor reacts to Primogen reacts to Functional Programming Compiler than OP. Just wanted to set the record straight here. Please like and subscribe. Man, so this is ITR reacts to CJ Milky reacts to Theo reacts to the Primogen reacts to Professor reacts to Prime reacting to, uh, I forgot who it was. Oh yeah, to Functional Programming is not better than OOP. Oh, please like and subscribe. Oh, please like and subscribe. I'm not the channel too. There will be a link in the description. Also, also to my, if anyone actually bothered, how far am I? 20 minutes in. Uh, I watched 16 minutes and I'm 20 minutes in. How? I'm watching this at 2.4 XP. Why am I speaking so much? But yeah, if anyone actually bothered watching this far, uh, please subscribe. Yeah. We're, not even gonna be, we're not even going to be able to hear his because he was a little bit quieter than the last one. We're sorry. We're sorry. Look, look, look at the second prime lit on top of the first prime. <laughs> and like, and, okay, so we're watching a YouTube video, Theo watching a YouTube video, Prime watching a YouTube video, this guy watching a YouTube video. We really are. Wait. This is getting more.
Also, also, look at this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight faces. Plus mine, nine. Nine faces. Play more pixely each time. We're about down to three. This is why this is why we got nine. We got one. We got one. We got one. We got one. In the presentation. And three titles as well. We're killing it here, guys. This is great. Dark Viper's gonna have a aneurysm if we're not careful. Let's go. Man, this is okay. This professor is pretty good. This is professor. Oh. I mean, I, Dark Viper has some good points uh, about reacting, but I feel like, I feel like, at this point, it's fairly transformative. I feel like everyone here has been fairly transformative, uh, as opposed to some React streamers who just leave the chair for a what was it, an hour, ten minutes? I don't know. <laughs> He's good. He chose me. Yeah, he's awesome already. Just doing the Lord's work for me. All right, this might be a little bit low. Oh, there's one more YouTube bar here too. We're so deep, boys. We're so deep. He had no idea. Okay. Okay. Ear warning. Okay. Ear warning. Hit subscribe. One of my most successful videos on this channel so far compares functional. I have to turn him up again. Can I? Do this. And this. And this. This is an interesting topic. Can I? Do this. And this. I have to turn him up a bit now too. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, luckily I can turn up everything here, but I'm also going to get my ears blasted by these other people. And y'all aren't getting gonna get to hear this louder, so whoops. So, and programming. This is an interesting topic to just me. But there's more to this debate than we discussed in the episode. Oh, should we make our 1.25 here too? Yeah, we'll make, we'll make it a little bit faster as well. Interesting, it'll be interesting. Well, I'm already at 2.4x speed. It looks like they're on the same day. Like, we're not uploading everything. The dude is like, this video came out 30 minutes ago. Here we go. And then time's like, back at him in the same day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're just like, clockwork. Take better drama to each other. I think I would be on the. This is, yeah, so we're currently talking about the debate between functional versus OO. Which one is better? Functional is better. This isn't even an argument. I have multiple videos about this already, but uh, looks like we're making another. Primogen is. Nice. Well. I mean, uh, I don't like either that much. I feel like Fugsel kind of hides what's happening a bit too much. Actually, I like that nobody has actually defined what functional programming is so far. Wait, how do you define functional programming, huh? Uh, I, I mean, I mentioned pure functions earlier, but no side effects, that's a good thing. Uh, recursion. Uh, not mutating, I think, is important. Can I draw? No, I can't. I don't have a drawing thing. Ah, oh, I should have gotten a drawing thing. Uh, but basically, imagine you have, like, uh, a for loop, right? Uh, you, you you have a for loop, uh, and then instead of it being a for loop where you can change the var i, the variable, uh, for every iteration, you make it a recursive function. Uh, and in a lot of languages, this would be really slow because you end up having a new stack every time you enter a function, but... If it's a proper functional programming language, then it does tail end recursion. Uh, if you pro if you write the function correctly, where it in code turns it into basically the same code as if you had used a for loop, and it's kind of like mm. uh, I, I I mean, and that's obviously more for me because I care more about frame rate since I'm uh, a game developer. Uh, so m maybe not. Uh, maybe it's m more useful for other stuff, but I do feel like it often just hides the f uh, what's actually happening in the function, if that makes sense. Uh, but honestly, I don't really like object-oriented code that much either. I uh, I mean, for um, games specifically, I'm a, 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 been a big fan of uh, entity component systems recently, or data-driven development uh, uh, two. I'm also a big fan of uh, very, very abstract languages like Puzzle Script. Oh my god, Puzzle Script is amazing. Y'all, uh, if y'all haven't checked out Puzzle Script ever, y'all should really check that out. Thanks, Leo. It's a Netflix senior engineer. He's got even this guy does the Netflix, by the way. Dude, this guy's a prime agent. Okay, you know what? I'm just gonna go to 3.66x speed because this is uh, getting kind of slow. He doesn't mention he's on Netflix, so I... He only mentioned he's from Netflix, like, every third or fourth video, so, you know, I, I, I don't... I, I kind of agree that he probably knows more about him than he's willing to admit. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm going to do it. 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 I'm Oh no! Oh god! Oh god! We'll just refer to our emergency Yeah, I do a live tweet too, but uh, honestly, I, I nobody follows me on Twitter. 
nobody would see it anyway. So it, I'm not even live. So it doesn't. So I, I'm not even getting like the free uh, what's it called followers from this. Kind of funny. Now that I'm fully funny, I'm like, I'm not funny. 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 I'm funny. I'm not 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 funny. i uh, yeah, it's it's a difficult one. Like you could say something about modets and uh, or no, what, what's the joke? The joke is that nobody can explain a modet. I think a monad is in the end just it's just the data structure, isn't it? Kind of it's just abstracted in a way that makes it not break pure functional programming uh, paradigms. Which again, it's like okay, what's the point then? You really should use pro functional programming at some point in your life just to figure out what it's like. Like, you you can't. I mean, I, I don't know what they do, of course. Like, uh, maybe it's not important if they're web developers. Like, Prime with Genesis. I don't know what Theo is. I don't know what these two are. Uh, but you you should try functional programming at least once just to have experience with it. You should try a lot of different paradigms at least once just to have experience with it. Okay. Okay. See, that's what I was saying. I don't like the coupling for OOP. Based on that, if you think I would prefer functional programming because that's a generic grounds for it. Yeah, beyond that, I really don't have much to offer because I have really too much functional programming. You know, that's really nuanced because I'm wondering why you're saying on the internet. I'm just supposed to. Um, this is a wrong thing. Reactive. So I think. Um, so I think the thing that's interesting about the debate now is that I think the lines have blurred a lot compared to 20 years ago because a lot of languages that were not actually functional for have gained a lot of functional features. So it's it's quite like functions as a function. Okay. You say they say that, but literally almost no languages have tail end recursion unless they are a functional programming language and it's it's like why why do they not have that it feels like a no-brainer but uh, i mean maybe it just makes the compiler slow maybe that's the thing i i wouldn't know so i think that part of the thing that makes it a little bit like complicated um today to talk about it compared to, to other i would say um, one of the things in general i think is i mean yeah uh, functions as first class citizens i guess it's called that is the thing that's in most languages not yeah true true a functional idea is that the main method of like, building your program is focused on like composition over inheritance. Right? So that's, mm -hmm. that's sort of the main. You know, I'm one thing, which would be the idea of composing together with functions rather than like inheritance. Right? So yeah, so that definition. Okay, so I'm going to Google this. Yeah, like, going to functional language. Right? First definition. Okay, so based on your like fourth definition there on inheritance, like would that classify as more of a functional language versus OOP, or would that or go? Go definition. This is where it's like complicated because go. Oh, but before before I talk about go, uh, so if if object oriented is inheritance and then functional is coupling functions together, then procedural would be. Procedural programming would maybe fall call, call this functional programming under that. Uh, only that, it, I guess instead of instead of them being nested in each other, they're more like after each other. If that makes sense, the functions. I mean, uh, we'll see. Go doesn't feel very like functional languages. I'm not sure why. The other thing is that functional programming languages have this concept of basically everything. Well, Go is a procedural language, isn't it? I, I feel like I've heard it described as a procedural language before. Okay, so like in, in Go, you have if statements, you don't really have like if expressions, you can't sort of, like if block doesn't return a value, does that make sense? Um, and so, so like, at least in my experience, for a lot of functional programming languages, I always like explore, first of all, I'm not saying they're more inspired by functional languages, like Lust is very inspired by functional languages, the first time I was running OCaml, and like they were like, OCaml, so like, you can like, return um, from if statements, and you can get a new value, right? So, so it's like, Go definitely doesn't have that, right? So, so that's where like, I feel that, even if it's the whole thing about the core of the inheritance, right? So, it goes literally, like, in that word, like, I'm trying to think, right? Yeah, you might call it more like procedural, I guess, but like, once again, he's going to say, 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 it's it's not really either a functional or or object oriented. It's procedural, I think. But maybe I'm completely wrong. Maybe I don't know what I'm talking about. Also, talking about Go, what's up with like Primogen's love slash hate relationship for Go? I can never understand. Does he like Go or does he dislike Go? Because uh, because I feel like I've heard both from him, or I feel like whenever he talks about it, he talks about it like he likes it. 
but then he says it in a way as if he's supposed to dislike it, I guess. I don't know, or as if, if it's like, a, oh, I don't like Go, but I like Go. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. But does he like it or not? Someone tell me, please. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I can certainly see my experience. Yeah. I really like that. It's not core opinion. It's um, not core opinion. Yeah. 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 But I haven't seen that all too often. They're used to that. Yeah. 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 As I've heard everything else, I was like, great. That was why it's useful. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 I I uh wait before I say this um I learned uh oh what was it called uh not lisp I remember we I was at university and they made us use Doctor Racket I think was the ID and it was it wasn't Scala. It was, uh, I, I remember this a few days ago. I, I certainly can't remember which language, functional programming language I learned. Ah. Uh, but asking, like, it was, a proper, word, say, it was a proper one. Um, so Haskell is much more, so you're asking, like, Haskell is much more you have to say when you're side facts and other things like that, you don't have to, right? So Haskell is like, it's not even safe, like, you're like, there's a project, right? So, so there's, you know, there's a project out there. Um, in general, I haven't met any, like, people who, who are not, you know, like me, you know what I'm saying? There's sort of, like, I don't have any, um, appreciation for the matter. All the natural people I know has good trade-offs with things, right? And Haskell is definitely, um, I don't think Haskell is very, Haskell is very pragmatic, right? So it's funny, yeah, it's like, unsafe functional program, it's not having contract, yeah, I, I, uh, I haven't actually tried Haskell yet, but it looks nice, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't feel like trying more functional programming nowadays. I like, uh, oh, talking about different types of programming, um, meta languages. Oh, meta languages are so cool. Like you can just define, you don't have to define types and then they kind of just figure out what the type is for you based on what you do in the function. And it's really cool. It's, it's like, uh, instead, instead of, uh, like in Haskell where you actually define the contract, the contract is figured out for you statically. Uh, it's like a dynamically typed language that gets statically checked. Uh, and But it's really, it can also mess to, lead to really, really difficult to debug uh, error messages, unfortunately. But it's fun. And it's fun. Uh, of course, the, the the main part of meta, meta programming, I, I forgot, I, I used, I tried SML a little bit, tiny bit. I think the main part of them is that you're supposed to be able to uh, change the syntax while you program, if that makes sense. Uh, which also, I think, is it sounds like it'll be horrible for IDs, but yeah, I don't know. Oh, and one last type of uh, type of programming language that I really like: uh, constraint line constraints language. I forgot what they're called. Constraint programming. That's what it was. Uh, constraint programming is. Uh, basically, you just define a bunch of dis constraints and then you have a solver that solves the problem for you. So, for example, for, Sudo uh, for, example, for Sudoku, you can just show, oh, uh, this row needs to have every single number from 0 to no, 1 to 9 uh, and define that for every row, for every box, and then it'll just super, super quickly manage to solve the Sudoku for you. Uh, yeah, uh, it, it's basically brute force. Uh, it's more. It feels more like a tool than the language, honestly. Uh, but it's it's very very cool if you if you've actually ever tried it. I mentioned nice. Wait, nice. YouTube, that fine time. Where's the professor? Oh. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Why did they slack it? I missed that. Alright, keep going. We'll keep going. Oh, camel, my camel feels real, but apparently it's not really real. Teach really knows functional by now. No, he doesn't. He only knows O camel. I mentioned. Oh, this is Teach. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, 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 okay. So this is Teach. And. Nice. Wait, and then he dissed me? What the hell? Okay, okay, okay. I got it. I got it. Let's. uh... Where's the professor one? There we go. There we go. Is that a quick thumbs down? Alright. Yeah, I just I've liked every video so far, so. Uh, I don't need to do it again. While loops are on the line, that's fair. It's true. Over, that's that's your back in OOP. But while loop, a condition can. I can be convinced either way. That was done this morning. Something I had to code. I was like, oh, I could be done with this in half the time if I use a for loop. But that's disgusting. So, oh yeah. Oh yeah. See, that, yeah, that's what that's how it feels like for a lot of functional programming. Maybe it's just me not being used to uh, writing functional programming. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's just a small thing. You can see by having unpaused. You can tell that his playback bar rotates from over to under his microphone. There's some weird going on with the Chromebook. I can't see. Is it like scripting too much? How do you know? Different than that. You guys have all written procedural code. I love it. C. C is procedural. It means you use a function. Yeah. Procedure is called a function. I love it. If you wrote functions, you've done procedural code. He's using it in a slightly different sense. In that, as I said, Go would probably consider more like procedural, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's what I was saying too. It's it's considered procedural. Inheritance, right? Even in certain certain behaviors, um, and like interfaces are effectively like duct type, or like which is kind of more like composition because you don't have to explicitly declare that this thing implements that thing. Yeah, right. And I miss writing in Go honestly a little bit. It's it's been ages since I wrote in Go, but uh, I I really liked some aspects of Go. I actually like. uh, I'm probably the only person who actually likes Go style, the 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 style they're they're enforcing. Functions. So it's like, it's only, it's, yeah, anyways, I think because it's being procedural, they just say that because they want to pretend it's like C. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. And sound pretentious. That's the other yeah, thing. I, love this yeah. like, I feel like, I feel like procedural is different, you know, but whatever. If you, if you just said it's a procedural language, you're like, wow, that guy must be really smart. But if you were just like, it can run functions, you'd be like, yeah, functions. yeah that's functions. <laughs> yeah, those functions. <laughs> so much. Anyway, oh my goodness, that's such a good thing. They just want to pretend Russ is like C. They just wish Russ actually was based. <laughs> Pre-watch, clearly Prime Watch, you reacting to him. I have Dang, no reaction layer here. That's the only reason he talked about it. But it's not based, okay? It's never been based. It just always wished it could be. But they just they can't. You know, it should be every other <laughs> <surprise laughs> language has people that are running their authoritarian. authority. <laughs> we, should, we should not be surprised. This is great. Honestly, I, r- I really want to try, uh, oh wait, 36 minutes. Wow, I'm actually not. I'm only three minutes over the video time right now, so I'm doing well, I feel. Uh, but yeah, I, I want to try Rust at some point, uh, or specifically, I want to try Bevy. Uh, apparently, I don't have to fight the borrow checker as much as I've heard you will otherwise if you use Bevy. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, Bevy, of course, being the entity component uh, system, the ECS engine made in Rust on for Rust. This is why you can demonetize. <laughs> oh, and also, apparently, there's uh, Bevy bindings for Godot's. And that that's being worked on by somebody, so maybe I'll try that at some point too. So it's not a proper React video if I don't get one guy by chat, right? Let me go on my one guy quick. Do you ever code on stream or do you just react to videos? Genuine question. Oh, nice. I think the one thing I do left. I don't have a chat. I'm not. I'm not a live reactor. Sorry. Than code on streams, react to videos. I've done this a total of maybe four times in the history of my channel. I am the furthest thing from a react, 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 react framework. I react to content way less than Primer or any of the other creators that usually are the ones talking. I just thought you'd like to jump in on this meme. That all said, oh, I like code on stream that much because I like coding in front of people. I like coding to solve problems and I come back and talk about the cool things they do. Oh, oh my gosh, we gotta put this guy on here. Oh man. Last him. Last, last we're putting him on last. <laughs> cool. He literally said, my brain is toasted. Got him. Yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, I don't have a shout out first of all. I, I kind of wish I did more yeah, react content sometimes, but it's way too much effort for me. I, I'm I'm not this uh, eloquent at speaking as these people are, unfortunately. Uh, also, my throat really been hurting for like a, no, it hasn't been hurting. Why am I saying it's hurting? I've been coughing for like five weeks now, so this was probably the worst time for me to do a reaction stream and talk a lot. But I I don't know. I just want to. F- I've been wanting to do this for a while, but. Because of the cough, I've been kind of putting it off, and I just wanted to finally get it over it. <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like we have to do one too. You know? in that process, and the only reason I stream is to make good videos for YouTube. I'd rather use code externally on my own as a way to make better content. So, if I want to moment, I need to make sure my chair is sitting here watching videos at some point. I need to order some delivery food and oh. eat while I'm watching. We could do that. You want? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, there's ten minutes left, and we're way over time. I mean, at this point. <laughs> Interesting, interesting. I feel like we're, this video is starting to become more about reaction, or I mean, the video I'm watching is starting to become more about reacting than the actual topic at hand, which is functional programming versus object oriented programming, okay? I feel like this is what we should be focusing on here, okay? Cool. It's an interesting take to be right? Uh, it's a wrong take here. <laughs> 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 I never remember to go ahead. He did not. It's a wrong take. I guarantee you he did not. Like, me saying it's a completely wrong take is going to be seen by hundreds of thousands of people. <laughs> I'm just right there. Just <laughs> oh, man. There's nothing better than when you're trying to be the like, somewhat polite content creator, especially when you're doing something like reaction content, where if you negative, you will be perceived as the aggressor, especially if you're reacting to somebody who could be seen as punching down. So I very mm-hmm. sympathize with yeah. the prime number one here, find the prime, <laughs> and how you want to say what was just said in the video was outright wrong. I can't, wait to, see what, I can't wait to see what Theo number three thinks of this video. <laughs> <laughs> but there's definitely one in the middle still. Like, but I'm excited for the really refined opinions of Theo number three. You know, like, a Rick and Morty episode. I feel like all the subject of if it's wrong, right? Yeah, no, I agree that the original was wrong. I already forgot what it was. I just remember I agree with it. I think. I don't know. There's a Theo in there who just like, doesn't do any JavaScript or TypeScript and just pure Go, and yeah. it's just like, a completely different person. That's like, that's super, let's see dash 411 Theo. You yeah. Know? Do you think this is kind of like Avengers Endgame or the multiverse? We can solve all the problems. So I, I assume this, uh, this uh, guy's in the top right's whole personality is functional programming. I, I'm, I'm joking, by the way. No, uh, I, their whole channel is about functional programming, is what I'm guessing from what I've watched in this video so far. Our terrible writing uh, later by just saying the multiverse. So, content to do such. It felt weird. And having someone else come in for you and be like, nah, he's wrong. It feels really good. It's like the biggest relief for someone else to say that you were not able to for any of many social dynamic reasons that start to happen in these situations. Okay, so he thinks he's wrong too. Oh. 
Let's go. Functional programming is well, not a Luckily, I can say that everyone here is wrong because I'm the one with the least subscribers and then nobody can say something back to me because uh, they would ju just be punching the little man. Though, uh, realistically, literally nobody will watch this video. <laughs> It's a way to look at a problem. Okay. okay. Anyways, uh, this is starting to get slow again, so I'm gonna uh, speed up to four x. I think. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I feel like uh, complimenting people really makes it easier to uh, criticize them. <laughs> Honestly, though, you know, you know what? You know what? Uh, since he's not reacting to the full video by uh, Frybergen, Frybergen could have just cut it af after he said he's kind of funny. Maybe that would have been like the ultimate 100% brain move. Uh, yeah, but let's go back to the video. <laughs> Wait, wait, let me, uh, oh. So here, this is my, uh, application to replace Melke. I don't know who they are. Uh, no, this feels mean. Sorry, I don't want to replace people. Y'all can y'all can have your little show, do whatever y'all want. Uh, I'll just stick here with my terrible lighting and uh, and funny jokes. Yeah. <laughs> what jokes? I didn't make any jokes. That's what. I'm confused. What has happened? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, who added, wait, uh, who added the uh, clear, clear, clear sound? Like, was that them? Was that Dio? Was that Primogen? Was that the, the professor? I don't know at this point. I'm, I'm, this is getting too confusing. Well, I'll make sure to not, I'll make sure to not edit, edit in any sound so that I, I won't be more confusing at least. <laughs> Why are we talking about? I'm confused. <laughs> see, see, yeah, most of my videos are actually cuts or my all my rec videos so far have been cut so with only stuff i'm trying to talk to but i still end up including most of the original video though which i didn't really like but i felt like otherwise i was missing context but this one of course is a bit different hopefully the forex speed is kind of uh making up for that i don't know <laughs> you know, I completely agree. Like the tool, it's more important to use a tool that works well for a job than uh, t just trying to stick to one language through thick and thin, no matter what you like. Uh, again, try functional programming if you haven't already. Just try it once. Yeah, as I said earlier, abstraction is so annoying. It's like if you if you want to be able to swap between different things, if you want to be able to swap between different uh, providers of the same thing then yes abstraction is nice for it but if it's literally just a one-to-one -one where you have one thing here it's uh and one thing here they will always communicate with each other you just put an abstraction layer in between them why it just makes the code messier and i it makes it more difficult to actually find out where your code is going like it's two clicks instead of one I get that it kind of helps with showing, oh, this shouldn't be used by this and so and so on. I, but ah, uh, I just, just do that other ways. I'd rather have like a contract saying, oh, this can be seen by these types of classes and this can be seen by this type of classes that isn't and like 
specific interface, if that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> oh, and also, a lot of the time, you don't really know what's useful for other stuff. There's so many libraries I've used where I've been wanting to use like a private function in there. And uh, I mean, at least when I'm modding games, uh, I can just call it anyways. I don't have to care about your stupid rules. But uh, you don't, you really don't know what other people should use or not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I am a very big fan of just looking at the code of what I'm trying to call to figure out what's going on. I've fixed bugs in other people's code this way. I've fixed bugs in Unity's code that way multiple times by now, actually. And having abstractions just makes it so much more difficult. It makes it more messy. It's honestly not worth it in my opinion, but... Yeah, yeah. That's what I was saying earlier, where you don't know what other people, the people using this code will want, honestly. Just make it so simple that anyone can change it to whatever they want it to be. Make your code simple. That's that's the primary thing. I get that some stuff can't be simple, uh, but uh, hopefully. Uh, oh, actually, I was thinking about this earlier today. But I'd really like to see a programming language that's designed to make algorithms simple. Uh, but I'm not entirely sure how that would be. Because uh, or the example, what I was thinking about, for example, uh, in the current game I'm working on, there's. Uh, at one point, we're generating a Voronoi, a Voronoi map, and we want to find the edges of each cell. Uh, and to do that, we need to find each uh, each corner of an edge, and then uh, basically just do a dict of all all the sub combination of what's it called uh, tiles that touch each other, and find out where they connect to another thing, uh, another something, what's it called, another corner. Okay, this is getting too complicated to explain, but basically you, you had to do a bunch of complicated stuff, and I'd like to find, I'd like to try a programming language that makes it simple, so it's easier to not uh, have bugs. Yeah, uh, I, I cannot comment on this. It's been way too long since I've used uh, Go, and I haven't done any... So, I mean, I've done service stuff for, uh, for games a little bit, but it's like very, very different than service stuff for web and so on. Uh, very, very different, I feel. Oh, I'm, I'm, no, I feel like there's been too much repetition in uh, repetition in this by people saying stuff and then uh, the people they react to it saying it later. Uh, I feel like I've been the, I've done that a few times already now. Uh, but okay, it's only 15 minutes left though. We can we can get through this. We can get through this. <laughs> Yeah, 
you, you know what this reminds me a bit of it's like when people talk about uh seeing code uh, seeing code they wrote like a month ago or something and then thinking it's completely stupid or not understanding it at all i don't have that problem i personally understand most of the code i write even after it's been a while uh but may maybe maybe i'm just to being cocky maybe i'm just a bad programmer and uh this is just me uh telling on myself <laughs> I I I I'm I'm also had a lot of the same opinions uh, from my past. Like sometimes I think about stuff I did in the past. And I'm thinking like, yeah, I would have done the exact same thing if uh, if I were in the same situation. But um, I also change my opinion a lot. Honestly, sometimes I sh I get an opinion and then someone says points out how it's stupid and I change it like 10 minutes later, whoops. Are we actually going to get to what functional programming is at this point? <laughs> Oh, I, I kind of wish that we watched the rest of the video, uh, or the uh, rest of the video, I kind of wish we watched uh, the rest of what he said about functional programming, because then we might actually have some, uh, something of use in this video, I feel like none of this was actually useful, but it's very fun, very fun. yeah no I, I think that's the most important part of it I, uh, it's like making what you teach engaging uh, I remember when I went to university, because I already knew programming before I went to university. I already worked in game dev before I went to university. <laughs> and a lot of what they learned was stuff that was super, super basic of me, which meant that I would zone out, right? Because the lecture was just boring because it's stuff I knew already. And then suddenly, in between everything, they mentioned something that I don't know. And then it's like, oh, wait, wait, what did they say? I missed it. I missed it. And it's, I don't know. I... I really, I did not have fun going to lectures. I still enjoyed going to university, though. I feel like uh, there were a lot of interesting classes I had there. I think, and that's also the reason why I like data-driven development, right? Because it's not about this internal state of the object, but more about the data you pass into it, right? Uh, and that's also why I like Burst, like I mentioned earlier. I think I mentioned, did I mention Burst? Where, right, it kind of forces you to say, okay, this goes in, I'm only reading from this. This also goes in, I'm reading and writing to this, I'm mutating this. But you still know that if you pass in the exact same stuff every single time, you still get the same out. Honestly, I feel like uh, that sort of programming where... Uh, I mean, maybe that is functional programming. Maybe that's uh, they would consider that functional programming. But 
that sort of programming where you are explicit about what you pass in and out. You don't care uh, about it necessarily being a pure function as long a pure pure function a pure function as long as you are uh, very clear about who owns the, the data that comes in and who is allowed to change it. And, and this is why I like not functional programming, but just for code that is written the same way it's seen by this uh, compiler. Or code that is written in the same way the compiler kind of sees it. I mean, sure, it's abstracted. Sure, it's not literally assembly code. But if you need to change something, you can very easily see, oh, here is where it went wrong. I just need to change it from... Uh, I just need to change it from here to here so that uh, it does something different in this scenario to make it better suit my needs. There's so many examples, like so many times I've seen someone try to explain, oh, this paradigm and this paradigm, where uh, they kind of it's, they use a simple program, right? Or fu even functional programming, actually. there's I've seen people try to explain functional programming or the benefits of functional programming with Fibonacci so, so many times. And it's like, that is not a good example. Or maybe that wasn't functional programming. Maybe that was the uh, dynamic programming. Uh, no, dynamic, I forgot what it's called. Basically just caching, right? Caching. Uh, the function return value. But you know what? You, you don't need functional programming for that. But also, it's like Fibonacci is super, super simple. Most algorithms aren't Fibonacci, right? Yeah, I also do think if you have a math background, then functional programming might be a bit easier for you. I kind of have a math background. I really like math. Uh, but again, I don't really like functional programming that super, super much. I like parts of it, though. I like parts of it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, ads, large ads. Hi. Hi, everyone. Oh, wow. Yeah, this light is not doing me any favors. Oh, wait, no, that was the ad. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So most of the light on my face is coming from a screen. If I, let's see, if I turn this off. Or a two. Let's see. You can see the dark circles under my eyes. Most of my the light on my face are is actually from my screen. Even if I turn off this, still light. It's literally just my screen lighting up my face. Anyways, if you watch this much, then please like and subscribe, I guess. Bye.